Hi, Lou Pulsifer here to talk about the top 10 game design software tools. And I'm going to talk about kinds of tools and offer alternatives rather than pick one particular brand of software to use. Now I'm not talking about tools to make the actual game in the case of a video game or even a tabletop game which requires art. I'm talking about tools that help you in the design. So we're not talking about programming or art or sound. And the software I'm going to discuss is PC software because most people own PCs, but a lot of it is available for Mac or Linux or even iOS or Android. Though I have to say, if you're trying to do your design work on a tablet or a smartphone, you're reducing your effectiveness because they're not designed for that kind of work. So here's a list, which I'm not going to repeat. I'm just going to show it briefly, and then I'll discuss each one. So the first one is a text database program. It allows you to permanently record your ideas in your playtest notes. Yes, you can use paper, but it's too easy to lose paper. You need something you can back up multiple ways. You don't want to get in a situation where your paper is lost and you've lost months or years of work. These are note-taking programs, but they also have search capability and you can organize your data with them. I use an old program called InfoSelect, but it's expensive and it's long in the tooth. I'm not sure the company is really actively developing new versions now. On the other hand, Microsoft OneNote is now free and there are versions for many operating systems, even Android. Evernote is free and syncs among multiple devices, just as Microsoft OneNote does. I use a simple program called Memento. Uh, it's really simple, but it is free. And of course, Sticky Notes comes with Windows 7, but it's very limited. So you have some choices. You're going to want a word processor, either for writing rules for tabletop game or for writing game design documents for a video game. And the choices pretty much come down to Microsoft Word or Corel Word Perfect, though there are more specialized programs, for example, Scrivener, for those who write fiction. I happen to like Word Perfect because it's easier to control and troubleshoot. You can reveal the codes and see what's going on. And in Microsoft Word, at least the versions I've seen, and I haven't seen the latest one, you can't see those codes. You have to guess. Now, I could use InfoSelect for much of my word processing. And other note-taking pro programs might do that as well, but it's less efficient. You can even use a spreadsheet for word processing if you like, but that's like trying to cut a tree down with a knife. Use the right tools, and you'll save a lot of time and frustration. We need a spreadsheet program. You know, some people believe that all games are math. That's not true at all. Nonetheless, most games include some numbers, if only lists and numbers of cards, for example, in a card game. Computer RPGs and shooters depend heavily on number relationships with the weapons and aiming and so on, and that's generally tracked in spreadsheets. So the spreadsheet is acting as a database program. Microsoft Excel is the commercial possibility. There are compatible free programs such as OpenOffice. I always liked Lotus 1, 2, 3 in the old days, but whoever hears of it now. You probably need a drawing program, and I mean a vector graphics program, not a raster or bitmap program. In other words, the drawings are stored as formulas, which results in relatively small files, and it's easy and quick to change the size without loss of quality because it recalculates everything. On the other hand, you need a pretty powerful computer. There's lots of overlap between vector graphics programs and high-end paint programs, like Photoshop. And the vector graphics programs are hard to learn, or complex to learn anyway. So we have the choice of Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW, which are both expensive, or Inkscape, which is open source, in other words, free, alternative. Then you might want a painting program like Photoshop. These are good for adding shading and textures to drawings and 3D models, 
and for some kinds of drawing they are also used to modify photographs it keeps track of every bit every pixel in a graphic resulting in large files when you get to higher resolutions there's a heck of a lot of pixels in that and each one has to have a color which adds three or four bytes to that pixel so Photoshop is very expensive it's also a bear to learn but you have the alternatives of Photoshop Elements, Corel Photo Paint, which comes with Corel Draw, PaintShop Pro, and the open source free alternative is called GIMP. You might want some presentation software. Presentations in the game industry tend to be used to try to influence people with money or people who can allocate money, publishers or other people in your company. They can be used for teaching as well, and here I'm using PowerPoint 2003, which is very old but still capable, to make these screencasts. OpenOffice in Press is a free alternative, and there are alternatives online in the cloud that you can use as well that are often free. Diagramming software can make your life easier if you're making line and bar charts or diagrams of hierarchical relationships or flowcharts. I use Microsoft Visio, which is not free. Um, some graphics programs have diagramming components, more or less. OpenOffice Draw is a free alternative, as is open source DIA. DIA. Do you need more advanced graphics programs? Well, video game designers might. They might want to have a white box program like Google SketchUp, which is free. And what a white box program is, is you you have something that's going to be a village but you don't have the art yet you can put white boxes to show where the buildings are going to be and then go on about what you're doing now out and out 3d modeling software is mostly very expensive you have 3ds max maya and zbrush but there is a free open source alternative blender what about a game engine well, you're only going to need a game engine if you have to produce a fully working video game. Game Maker Studio is good for learning and it's used for some commercial games. Unity is very popular now, a 3D engine that has multi-platform capability and beginners often use something called a Playmaker, a plugin that costs 45 to 95 dollars that makes it a lot easier to use. It's a scripting program. There are lots of online courses available about how to use Unity as well. Uh, Epic's Unreal Engine tends to be used for the really big games on consoles, and that's now available to learners as well. Reminder software or deadline software. This isn't something you might not think about, but meeting deadlines is really important. Something that will remind you when the deadline is coming up, and you can set how long before that reminder starts can be very useful. I use MiniMinder, which does that. I also use Personal Reminder, which can be set to pop up an alarm every day or every week as I prefer. Some people will prefer the alarm systems that are part of other software. I like these too. My general advice is don't get too tied up in trying to get the very best software. But don't use a hammer when you need a saw. Don't use, for example, Microsoft Excel to do word processing. You can do better than that.